Hello everyone. Um, once again back with another video on Visual Studio Team Services. Basically, this was a requested video. So, but it was also in one of my curriculums, and I was going to make a video on it. So here it is. Basically, the idea behind this video is to demonstrate continuous integration and continuous deployment. Once again, to keep uh, only the continuous integration and continuous deployment in mind and ignoring the rest of the stuff. While I was digging deeper into continuous deployment, I found out that it heavily relied upon the target machines. So basically, if you are trying to like deploy your application to Azure, you are going to create a lot of endpoints on Microsoft Azure. You are going to like create um, an application in the Active Directory and so on and so forth. So I'm going to cover all of those steps in this video so that you can understand how you can integrate your application and deploy your applications from Visual Studio Team Services. So previously we mm, the, uh, the, the concepts that we had already covered were how we can uh, build uh, build the projects and we checked um, how we can do that so in this uh, module we are going to take a step further and we're going to cover continuous integration and continuous deployment only as you can see there is no source code available here because I cleaned everything up uh, the build settings let's have a look at them first what they have for us no release build um, okay so we do have a build here how about we simply just delete it where we can do that we cannot do that from here anyways we will uh, right away create a new build definition for our project and then we will manage everything from there as you can see everything is clean at the moment it does not contain anything at all this so what we need in this module is visual studio team services account visual studio itself and then finally microsoft azure because i am going to use microsoft azure because it's really very simple and straightforward we can use other setups like for example we can um, like we can deploy uh, the applications to our own machines or the machines of the clients or we can like for example create a server that that our clients can connect to and download the binaries or update it but i'm not going to go deeper into that sort of networking so i will be leaving everything at all what i'm going to use in this is a simple ASP.NET web application because Azure as we can see here uh, the definition the, the continuous deployment supports the app services as well as the cloud services the cloud services takes a bit longer for deployment as compared to app services so I'm going to use app services in this example to show you quickly how you can use continuous delivery to deploy your applications on Microsoft Azure so what to do first create a build definition or create a new app service I say let's uh, work with uh, the build so since we need ASP.NET application we will go ahead with ASP.NET build not ASP.NET core build because I'm not having ASP.NET core installed on this laptop and as you can see it has only as uh, web application not five application so and, and that is why we need to select this one not uh, not this one and on the other hand you can select any of this as well like i had already mentioned in my previous videos uh, what all of these are for so if uh, you don't know what they are you can check my previous videos they are live okay let's create this one repository sample project of course 
continuous integration we need to check that one up if you don't know what this is please check my previous videos i have explained what this is i will also walk you through this in this video but not very briefly okay so it creates mm, the build process restores the new get packages builds the solution test assemblies if we have any test functions or test objects assigned publish the symbols publish the artifacts if you don't know what this is i would still recommend that you please check my previous videos because i have explained each and every single thing here all of these properties etc so please do do check all of them we will just create this mm, Okay, that one. And we'll remove that one just to keep the name a bit tight. Okay, so this will create our build definition. Up to now, we have simply just created the build definition so that we can perform the continuous integration to our our this uh, this project. Um, yeah just making sure that this continuous integration is checked now move onward with the releases come over here new definition uh, the, the process is similar as to builds and releases the builds uh, has the task for building and release has the task for releasing the project as i already mentioned earlier in this video that we are going to use azure app service because we are going to create an app service here so we will be using deploy your azure app service there are other settings like for example deployment with slot if you don't know what deployment with slot says or what these performance tests are i definitely recommend that you check my introduction to microsoft azure app service that is also available on youtube and it is a very comprehensive guide and introduction to all of the features that azure app service provides and the deployments and slots and how to swap them is a part of that we will be going with this one select next sample project which is our project and as you can see this is the this is the build definition that we have so we're going to use the the sample build was for our dotnet and asp.net build preview definition so what this will do is this release definition has been created for every build every build that comes from this one it won't bother about uh, bother working or processing any other builds but whenever there is a uh, when the, whenever there is a change in this build particular build that we just created uh, remember that we change the name from like this to uh, like from this to this that was to keep everything short so that we can know which one we are going to use you can uh, name it as you like so we check uh, we check continuous integration on the builds tab we're going to do the same on continuous deployment uh, the concept is pretty much simple these are just the triggers for example we had here continuous integration that meant that whenever uh, the build is going to start when is the build going to start and this trigger means when this release is going to start so on the builds we had continuous integration which meant when the build should start and on the release definition we have continuous deployment it means when the release process should start so basically they basically they are just uh, two big words or confusing words i should say but um, the underlying concept is really very much simple they are just conditions that whenever they are met this task should be uh, should be executed should be started or triggered whatever you, you might want to say i'm unable to find an analogy of this like for example what do this when that happens that is the similar concept in internet of things so for example like whenever my cake has been baked start the tv and when my tv starts turn on the fan when the fan reaches revolution 50 turn on the ac etc etc so basically these are particular triggers that control how your processes and tasks are managed these are basically events 
continuous deployment is an event continuous integration was an event those events are handled based on how they need to process so for example continuous integration was an event that got raised whenever your project was changed whether it be a source code change whether it be a process uh, with the project change whether it be resource change resources were deleted uploaded etc and this continuous deployment is an event that will be triggered whenever your build this particular build the selected build passes it won't trigger for failed of course because that won't make any sense but whenever this build passes and this build completes this release definition that we are going to create will trigger and it will it will follow what we ask it to do and just the way in the build we uh, we had assigned a few tasks a few jobs that it had to do in order to complete the build we could add extra steps we could remove unnecessary steps for example if uh, like for example if we know that our project does not require or does not depend upon any of the nuget packages then there is no need to have that nuget package in it at all so uh, uh, what that uh, what that would do was that we would be removing the default steps and default paths from that build definition and on the other hand right here in the release we can do the same we can add other steps like for example if we are going to uh, publish this the results of this build to the app service we can at the same time we can publish them to our like for example backup server we can just simply add a task the task would be assigned a job to like for example upload the zipped archives or the artifacts to our server like for example or take a backup in our one drive or move them here and there etc so basically these are just simply triggers and i'm well i think and i hope that i'm pretty much clear to you that what a continuous deployment or continuous integration is so we'll continue uh, from here the uh, yeah the agent hosted or default i cleared that up hosted means the hosted service queue or default means that you're going to manage them using your own on-premises computers etc they, 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 they require a bit um, of custom handling so we'll just simply keep uh, everything default now comes the uh, comes a bit tough part as you can see we selected to deploy an azure app service which means that uh, that this uh, this agent cannot do anything if we have not subs uh, added a subscription over here app service name etc if we do not provide these uh, these uh, properties these fields it won't be able to do anything at all so for that we need to head on to azure app service Oh, no, no, sorry, Microsoft Azure only. So basically, this is my Microsoft Azure, and I need to configure a few of the things here. First of all, what we need to configure is we need to configure our Active Directory. Basically, what this requires us to do is it requires us to create an endpoint where Visual Studio Team Services can connect. This is uh, entirely a specific. Uh, a specific uh, part of the video because I'm only going to like enable deployment on Azure so if you are not going to use Azure then this part of the module may not make any sense to you because what I, whatever I'm going to do is I'm just going to configure my Microsoft Azure to start accepting these binaries these you know, these deployments or whatever these things are artifacts for example so this is a specific a portion only if you're going to use Microsoft Azure for your deployment so whatever I'm going to do is uh, if you're going to uh, if you're going to use the same I I would recommend that you uh, that you watch this uh, these parts carefully there are many differences in the classic Azure portal and uh, this new Azure portal I had to dig a lot deeper and I really got my hands messy while I was trying to search here and there and I used a lot of cursive words just because Microsoft did not update most of the documentation so for example there is a there's a concept called client ID 
and that uh, most of the documentation still use that uh, that similar word but on the other hand on this azure active directory that uh, that id or that token is called application id so there is a difference between client id and application id but somehow microsoft thought maybe the developers will figure it out so this is my default directory you, you on your own microsoft azure may have some other uh, active directory or the default directory for your own or you may have some other directories set up the way your system may be configured uh, we need to set up a new application because this will be connecting to a service principle and service principle requires you to have an application that works on behalf and your uh, this uh, team services will be accessing that application to like uh, perform actions within this system a bit confusing but once we get through this it will make a lot of sense at the moment i don't have any applications because i removed them and i don't use active directory a lot okay so just to keep things simple i'm going to uh, write names continuous deployment testing makes sense continuous deployment testing because we are uh, we are using microsoft azure to test the continuous deployment Keep this, don't change it to native. Sign, okay. This doesn't have to be a real URL because uh, uh, Microsoft or Azure is not going to test it against anything at all. Azure.net, so for example, if we're using this one, Azure.net and it works. It uh, The only thing that you should take care of is this part, just to ensure that this is a URL and not something any plain text create the application okay while this is working okay so it <laughs> it is done there are f uh, a few things that um, okay so we can go over here forget about that Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to strip out a few of the important tokens from here. First of all, what you need to use is this client ID. This is the client ID, the application ID that uh, that they called. Do not consider object ID to be the client ID just because the object and client, subject and application name resemble. Don't fall for that. This is uh, your ID that you want to use and okay so uh, because okay coming back from here from there secondly uh, i just uh, there was nothing particular over here i just wanted to load that page okay so don't think that after this step you have to do that uh, we're just generating a few of the keys over here so let's say my key duration if your service needs like for example a bit of security then you can select one year and after that the key that um, the key that uh, you're going to generate over here will uh, will be useless it will be invalid uh, after one year and you will have to generate a new key so just so that if someone even gets access to your key or tries like brute force and gets to your key they can't use it anymore two years never expires don't do this one year okay so it does not show the value over here just because you have to save this save right so you have to copy this one because um, once you close this blade this field won't be available to you or uh, and then I'll show you later paste it point key it's not the id i'm just using it or on the other hand let's not use it at all 
save it on the other hand I had this one save yes I want to replace it okay so just for the demonstration go to keys if you go over here it's hidden go to here you can either just delete it or you can forget about it or you can use this key against um, this because there is no way that you can get it back otherwise you can always create a new key so these were two things getting back over here the next part that you want to do is you need to get the tenant IDs the tenant IDs are also like for example keeping it keeping things simple it's also an access token uh, GUID assigned to your directory set settings etc go to app registrations and under the endpoints there are multiple URLs assigned they all have the similar GUID as you can see the first portion this one this one this one this one they are all same so you can select any of them so for example if I am going to use um, this one and I do this just so I can copy it right over here tenant ID okay so these were a few of the things that that we needed right from here now coming back over to mm, let's close this for our next session right now most of the stuff on the Azure side has been done we have created a new application under Active Directory It has one register one app registration and later we will assign a, uh, some security to it um, some roles to it and that will complete our azure side uh, ever shared uh, azure sites configurations so what now we need to do is basically it will show these ones so azure available azure subscriptions available service connections so what we need to do is we need to add service connections and that's exactly why I came over here uh, to uh, you can always go to this settings services once you're there you can create a new service endpoint what we need to do is we need to create Azure resource manager uh, what was that manager sorry I was going to say management so Azure resource manager subscription so we need to set that one up Azure resource manager if you click on it if like for example you select mm, connection name and if your account is set up you can like go to the subscription and done but in most of the cases it is going to fail and it is going to ask you to sign in again and it is and even if you sign out and sign in again it is always going to going to say the same sign in again sign in again so what I what I found uh, to be helpful and valid in these cases was if 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 you create all of those yourself and the steps that we took over here like in a directive directory and the changes that we're going to make into the subscriptions etc all of them they were so that we can create the service principle ourselves. so like for example if we create that one and we set up the connection name the connection name needs to be a friendly one so for example my azure connection right subscription id the subscription id of azure subscription name the name of the subscription it uh, is not visible over here but it's a secret one <laughs> service principal client id now now these are the things that um, that are required from Azure Active Directory the IDs that we saved let's see 
app registrations going back here hover over it click to copy go over here principal client id in the classic portal this the client id is something else however in the new portal the client id is called to be application id so when principal key the keys now, now see if you go back over there and try to like access the key you won't be able to see it because it's hidden of course the tenant id oops copy paste it now i'll just have to pause it for a moment and then i will click on this verify connection uh, because i have to enter these values um and yeah whenever you whenever you fill this form in always click on verify this connection because if you don't do that and click ok it is going to add extra service points over here with failures but but there won't be any difference of failure or successful connection so i rec i highly recommend that after filling this form you at least verify the connection okay and yeah before you even continue there is another step that you require like for example uh, the azure directory is a part of your subscription which is this one so what what you need to do is you need to add access to it so for example uh, we created the application in azure active directory what permission it might have that that if if we add our application as a contributor over here we will give our uh, our teams uh, team services account uh, or, or the service the access to contribute the content to microsoft azure over here so if if you try to get my point we don't need to like for example add it as an owner or other stuff we, we can just simply give it the access to be a contributor select that one okay remember the name of our application first just type cd underscore and it will find it cd testing select okay so this will add our uh, add our users as uh, add our application as the user and then it will let us configure our Visual Studio Team services. Yeah, coming back over to here. If uh, in the services, if you see over here, we have the connection that we were trying to establish. I I didn't do anything at all. Just said that uh, created an application in Azure Active Directory, used its properties like for example application ID etc. Set up the permissions for the, it to use like the uh, under the access control created a new account created a new user sorry and then simply just created uh, that connection now if we head back over here reload that you see under the service connections we have my Azure connection this one click that oh, sorry this is my default app that I've never used until now. Okay, app services. Go back over here, add. App services. Uh, and if uh, you're new to these, these things, I have a video for you that you can see all right what name we should give it to cd testing oops seems like someone else is also testing continuous de and deployment let's hope his name is also not absurd bingo testing resource I have quite a lot of resources that I keep testing and then I delete them. So 
subscription name cd testing it it's going to be shown anyhow so it's mm, validating okay uh, while that works why don't we simply go ahead here and create a new application so previously on this uh, portion all of our stuff is done we just need to fill this one and it will be filled as soon as it finishes deploying so while that is happening okay <laughs> that was fast so this and we can always refresh that one we let it reload cd testing of sol these are other settings deploy to slot if we have deployment slot set up web app url if you can provide this url over to here but let's leave that out at the moment save it wow to change the name default release now it seems fair finish that up it's working it's working change the name to azure app service enter save it everything needs to be saved so that history can be checked up against mm, yeah web app to vs ts should I go ahead and add to Azure too? Or just leave it? I think I should just leave it. Okay. Basically, I'm not going to walk you through around like differences of ASP.NET 5 or 4. I might, but I just need to you know, I just need to keep things a bit simple at the moment. So I will just create oh I missed a B over here. seems like a sin to me okay so everything is done over here triggers our trigger is set what's this forget uh, yeah releases let's have a look over there come on all definitions asp.net build preview Mm, yeah fair enough I'm just trying to check a few things up so that everything is in their position continuous integration and wow so I have to <laughs> reload that release page once again. Default release. Edit triggers. Continuous deployment is set up. Continuous integration is set up. So when we simply just upload this project, you will see that first the build will initialize, it will process, and after that, right after that, release will trigger and we will be able to find it under this project so at the moment if this is a new um, uh, this is a new app at the moment it shows this page we all know that if we have ever used microsoft azure of course so everything is working build Fair enough. Sample project. Uh, you, you need to, if you have multiple teams or multiple projects, then you need to see where you are trying to deploy it. So if you go to Solution Explorer, right click that. Yeah. Add solution to source control. Yes, sample project. Uh, this is another project that I use 
when I'm trying to test so don't I, I do make some mistakes while checking a different one so always check up against this and this finally okay these plus markers suggest that it is done check in population my website fair enough so these are the changes 72 files basically these are the files that that are changed the, uh, the files that it considers that were changed always shows and I always hate this one let it work mm, while that happens or after that happens change set 37 C 37 if we need to use the particular change afterwards come back over here yeah these were the previous ones going back over here Solution Explorer, these were uploaded. Go to Files. We app. Right. And so come back over here. Little definitions. And you can see it is running. So click on that one. Default release over here this has no recorded as per now but this got triggered as you can see we do not have to queue any build at the moment all that we did was simply just uploaded our project from Visual Studio to Visual Studio Team Services so we can go over here and check what is happening over there no deployments yet uh, have a look over here uh, your app service this is just the name okay so you all uh, so you all know how long does it take if you have seen my previous videos or have ever worked in this one running for 22 seconds four five six seven so it basically restored all of the package because we needed it to restore off all of the packages so this was used for building solution it is building core compile prepare for build okay copying 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 done testing a summary list we, we did not have any test so it, it won't do anything at all publish symbols publish artifacts so that the artifacts or entire of the executable files should go over to the artifacts of this build as you can see it ran for 58 seconds completed two seconds ago go back over here and no no sorry 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 go back to the default build and as you can see the artifacts are over here in the drop folder summary but but that's not all let's go over to here go to the release uh, reload it and there you see the release why did it not show over here anyways as per this build the release has started so oh, no, no. it's going to take me to build Is it even working? Okay, so it is working, but it is queued for an agent at the moment. So I'll let it work and yeah. Deployments app service deployed with yeah, so if you can if uh, if you come over here How how long will that take? Environments Q 
queued for agent how long is it going to be queued for agent I don't understand that Quit it two minutes ago <laughs> funny anyways just for the sake of checking if you come over here and if you look over here deployments and uh, under deployments you will see that this Azure App Service because we had the default uh, release uh, this release and then under the releases we had that name set up um, where is that this Azure App Service so and since we had that Azure App Service and it is deployed with release one so first release uh, releases and this is the first release and is it working deployment in progress all right it took three minutes just to connect to the agent how busy are the agent smith <laughs> okay so basically what it what it did was when the build was successful it completed 19 seconds ago funny anyways forget about this so when it completed it triggered the deployment because we had that set up in the release configuration so it started the deployment and it deployed to azure app service with release one so if we release it again it will have release two because if we go over here I should go over here because I want to give you a complete overview of this so I definitely will um, the default release if we go over here overview how do we edit it oh yeah it was right in front of me variables where was the uh, yeah right over there so if you go back over here and you see release minus one or hyphen one so if you go over here release minus and this is the uh, this is the variable since it was the first release it got published as one if it was second it would be two three four five and so on and so forth so queued it shows it was it is queued so if we double click on it 4.2 minutes ago Converted three minutes ago releases. Come on. Okay, so I can simply close these. In the meantime, did it work? Oh, succeeded. So as you can see, the build also succeeded. The deployment also succeeded. So we can like click on this one. No, 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 this is going to take me to the default release. I don't want to go there. Releases, double click on that. Okay, so uh, where did it put it on Azure App Service? The, the setup that we had for uh, the Azure application. Actions if we need to take any application, like redeploy, etc. Deployment status succeeded triggered when was it uh, triggered five minutes ago completed just now tests no test because we did not have any tests and these tests are basically human interactions or bots that check whether our build is suitable for a public release or not so don't consider them as ordinary as the unit testing so like for example you can set uh, semi-automatic tools uh, that email human uh, human IT pros and ask them to check whether this build needs to be on the deployment slots or it does not need to go to the production and so on and so forth so it succeeded and have a look over here that it took around five minutes to complete anyways I remember on Linux environments for dotnet core I deployed everything I tested it I built it and it took like nearly around 30 seconds or 45 seconds around using the same tools that a tool uh, I also made a tool that is available on github so anyways this was the previous result let's head over to this one and see what Azure has for us in the meantime let's clean things a bit up clean this 
clean this and files so I can close this right yes have a look over here the same web page but now it shows our most recent publish show so these are Microsoft's default values etc I don't own them <laughs> and so well this concludes the introduction to continuous integration and continuous deployment I can go ahead and delete this because I don't keep anything at all in Azure because I have to train people and all of these things might come out and in 21st centuries we cannot trust hackers so let's do that one too yeah and so well I I hope I hope you learned a few of the things from this video and I really hope that this video might come handy to you and if it does do share it with your friends family because there are many programmers and families too and so well if you have any questions send me I might create another video for that and so on happy coding